Second Punic War, Cannae, 2nd August 216 before Christ. This was the bloodiest day in military history. More men fell at Cannae than on the first day of the Somme in 1916 or in any day's fighting on Hitler's Eastern Front. Hannibal's flawless double envelopment maneuver is still studied at military colleges, and modern commanders seek to emulate it. In spring of 216 before Christ, the Carthaginian commander Hannibal marched south through Italy hoping to persuade the allies of Rome to abandon their allegiance. He seized the supply depot at Cannae, thus blocking the route between Rome and her allies to the southeast. The Romans elected two new consuls, Gaius Terentius Varro and Lucius Emilius Paulus, to lead a combined army of 40,000 Roman legionaries with 40,000 allied infantry and about 2,500 cavalry. The consuls agreed to hold tactical command on alternate days. Hannibal awaited them with a force of 40,000 heavy infantry, 6,000 light infantry and 10,000 cavalry. Arriving at Cannae, the Romans built a fortified camp. Hannibal sent his cavalry to stop the Romans collecting water from the river Aufidius. On the third day, Varro had commanded and marched out to fight arranging his infantry in depth, hoping to use them to smash through the thinnier Carthaginian line. He maneuvered his column so that Hannibal was backed against the river, where the Carthaginians would have less room for the cavalry to operate. Varro put his few cavalry on the flanks with orders to hold off the enemy horsemen. Hannibal, meanwhile, had drawn up his forces with the Celtic and Spanish infantry holding the center. The veteran African infantry were on either flank. On the far right and left were positioned the cavalry, which greatly outnumbered the Roman horses. The battle began as Varro hoped. The cavalry on the flanks engaged in a desultory skirmish while the Roman heavy infantry advanced and pushed back Hannibal's infantry. But Hannibal had guessed Varro's intention when he saw the Roman dispositions. He had put his men with their backs to the river so that they had access to fresh water, and the hot wind would blow dust into the Romans' faces. As the Celtic and Spanish infantry fell back, the, Roman, the Romans advanced into a crescent-shaped bulge within which they became increasingly disordered. And closely packed. On Hannibal's order, the Carthaginian cavalry attacked in earnest, driving the Roman horsemen from the field with heavy loss. At the same time, the African infantry wheeled inward and began pushing against the flanks of the Roman infantry, compressing the crowded legionary ranks even further.
When the Carthaginian cavalry returned from chasing the enemy horsemen, they charged into the rear of the Roman infantry, who were now surrounded. Thirsty, hot, dusty and crowded together, the Romans were virtually helpless. The killing went on until darkness fell, when the survivors cut their way out of the trap and fled to the nearby fortified town of Canusium. Other Roman survivors included the fleeing cavalry, the guard left at the camp, and a few detachments absent on the day of the battle. Paulus was killed, but far escaped. The Greek-speaking states of the southern Italy and Sicily renounced their alliances with Rome, as did Macedon. However, Rome's other allies remained loyal. When Hannibal offered peace on moderate terms, the Roman Senate refused. The war continued. Losses. Carthaginian 5,700 of 56,000 engaged. Roman they had 48,200 dead and 4,500 captured of 86,000 engaged on that day. Dois Os rios uh, tinham ocupado uh, venezianos, uma vantajosa, o Bartolomeu da Alviano né? e o Nicolo que era no alto de uma colina. Aqui eu botei Pitigue, do Pitigiano, para não ser flanqueado, uh, foram uh, mas responsáveis por né, defender Veneza.